So, E3 2019 with Nintendo is finally here, and we got the big bad Luigi's Mansion 3 trailer that we knew we were going to get this whole time. Let's go and analyze it a little bit and do a little bit of speculation on the side. What I've decided to do with the footage of the trailer is I've shuffled most of the scenes to try and be in chronological order. I'm obviously not going to get this 100% right, but there is quite a narrative being told in a fair part of the trailers. So starting off, we're actually going to go to the Treehouse live footage. That's the bus, that's the bus ride, and that's them arriving. Oh my god, that's the opening cutscene! There may be better footage that I'll use in the video, but in the background when we first found this footage, we can actually see the opening cutscenes going on. In this, though it's only in the background and not at all being the center of the camera's attention, we do see all of the characters, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and the three toads, or at least two of them, in a coach. They are about to arrive at the hotel. We can even see them swinging around as the coach swerves around on the road. From what I can tell from the half second of footage I can imagine in my memory from when I saw the footage, we see a little bit of Mario and Princess Peach romance, or at least they, I don't know, look at each other and nod and smile or something. We see the toads playing together, and a little bit later on we see Polterpup appearing with Luigi when he comes outside the coach. We actually see this specific shot and sequence in part of the trailer, properly. I've called it the prequel sequence. In here we can see Luigi experiencing the hotel for the first time. It's like a golden dream like sequence in the daytime. We can see the hotel isn't ghostified. Luigi is pretty happy as well. Is this all one big fake image or perhaps maybe the hotel gets bad at night? It was also suggested that maybe there was a day and night sequence going on in this game but I think more likely it's just this is all a facade and it gets a lot more gloomy at night time. The next chronological scene we see is a flashback to the lobby. We see Mario, Luigi and the blue and red toad. Mario is eating a cake to show a little bit of his personality I guess. Luigi Luigi is all panicky, Polterpup is even there stealing a cake from Mario, and there is a buffet to the left. We also see a receptionist or a bellboy ghost in the background, giving a nice half classic, half portrait kind of style. It's a great compromise, and I think classic fans will be very happy to see such an iconic return. However, actually, this guy is not a ghost during the day. We can actually see he is a genuine humanoid person but he will become a ghost in the nighttime sequence. We'll see this more clearly later on. Perhaps as a little mini boss ghost, he fights at the reception desk. Maybe he fights with letters flying them around at the desk. Maybe he hides behind the counters or maybe he attacks with keys. It's very in theme with Luigi's Mansion, so it would make a lot of sense. Or maybe they just wander elsewhere. You'll see him somewhere else. In fact, the idea that the humanoid ghosts are in fact ghosts could be exactly what Luigi is gasping at from the very first trailer. In this same sequence, we also see the toads in the background trying to move Peach's luggage. Apparently, she has a lot. And it also shows that there's going to be room for more humorous cutscenes with more characters. Hopefully, we'll see more of them when Luigi unlocks them, or at least saves them to some capacity. We also see the big, obvious, giant character pin marks. I'm not quite sure what they're there for, other than saying, like, come here to be checked in. I'm not sure, but it's probably those kind of things that get turned into boards that then get screwed out with crosses over them from the first trailer. Moving into the elevator, we see another humanoid ghost, much more clearly not a ghost. But you can just tell by her design that she's going to be a ghost. It's all one big elaborate trap. And the fact that we see her so early on suggests that it's all a big old form of foreshadowing for a later boss. Unless this is found in some kind of memories for Luigi. As a character, she could be some kind of posh diva, singer, or maybe an actress. Maybe she appears in the theatrical area. Maybe she's some kind of scowling enemy, or she has some kind of secret in her hair. Maybe she attacks with her hair, or she has some kind of fur coat scarf attack. I don't know. In fact, actually, her dress kind of reminds me of Bogmire having that melting into the ground effect. Maybe she has underlings and they're all gooey and gross. Wonderfully beautiful in the day and horribly melting and gross and witchly at night. Also another tiny thing, we see a map of the tower to the left and it looks fairly normal. Perhaps we'll come back to this exact same room and see that the tower picture is way more wacky at night time. Also the yellow toad exists, in case you couldn't tell before. They may appear in the coach scene, but I'm not entirely certain, so just to make it absolutely confirmed, here it is, the yellow toad. Next up, we get the bedroom prequel. Luigi settles into his bedroom and he settles nicely into bed alongside Polterpup. It's all very nice, Luigi's clearly very happy, and he gets his favorite little book. He gets all nice and comfortable and falls asleep instantly. This is the perfect segue into the actual meat of the game, where we jump into the nightmare zone. Also, Luigi's far more expressive here. 
So now we come to the very first room, and it's all Halloweeny and gross. There's a misty element to the floor. Perhaps there's going to be an occurring effect. Maybe it hides trap doors on the floor. Can it be expelled by clearing a room, or maybe expelled by using some kind of wind ability, activating wind turbines to clear the air? There's Halloweeny balloons to keep that scary element to it. Can it hide ghosts, or is it just some strange decoration? We also see a green Luigi suitcase on the bed, clearly showing this is his room, and he fell asleep too quickly to unpack it. Clearly, this is day one. Luigi settles into this room, wakes up after falling asleep instantly into the creepy atmosphere in the middle of the night, and explores out. Although I wonder, how does he wake up? Does he have a bad dream, or does he hear bad sounds? Whatever causes him to wake up, it's in this exact room that he gets his very first torch. Next we see Luigi slowly crawling through a door. I'm pretty sure this is his bedroom door. I think it's got that same kind of wardrobe in the background and it would make sense from a narrative perspective. Into the hallway we see Peach's luggage absolutely everywhere and Luigi doesn't have his poltergust. Perhaps while Luigi doesn't have his poltergust and only has a light to see what's going on, he finds the portrait traps. He finds all three toads, Mario and Peach, trapped in their portrait paintings. And presumably they're being levitated by some kind of ghost in a cutscene here. Maybe it is King Boo who doesn't attack immediately or it's somebody else, I don't know. Either way, they're probably lingered in front of Luigi before being thrown away to be found later in the game. And though there's no obvious segue straight away here, I figured I'd show off the title screen where we can actually see that King Boo at the top of the tower, which people did find a secret face for him for, is a lot more visible this time. Just an interesting little tidbit. So moving on, we come to the car cutscene, back with the old car from Dark Moon, oddly enough, and this is once again where Luigi finds his new poltergust, the Poltergust G00, or Goo. Interestingly though, he doesn't have any goo here, do take note of that. Into what I'm basically gonna call room one, we see a broken window on the right, which maybe a ghost broke, or maybe there was a cutscene of it breaking. We see some remaining coins that may be related to the window, who knows, and also a vending machine. This has a lot of room for potential. Is there actual items inside? It looks like it actually accepts coins. Maybe it could give power-ups or items to Luigi. Maybe it is an upgrades machine that Luigi can revisit and get mini upgrades for his poltergust. The top one in the middle even looks like some kind of fire flower or a pumpkin. Pumpkin makes sense for the theme of Halloween, but fire flower makes sense for the theme of Mario, so... There were upgrades in Dark Moon to give you different pushing suction powers, so it could line up nicely here. Who knows? So maybe it could be those again, or it's just some smaller upgrades of some kind. We also see some Luigi's Wanted posters. They're totally hiding something, or at least the left one is, but otherwise there's not too much to point out. Though they actually, the image is different from the very first trailer. Next up, we see a ghost trio. Normal ghosts, nice and classic, costumed up like maids. Just, you know, being a slightly fancy and probably coming with more HP from it. Here we can see it's that same expressive cutscenes that we kind of got from Dark Moon. Also do notice that the goo in G00 is still very much empty. There's also stuff on the floor to the right, including what looks like the little book that you could use in Dark Moon as well. Up next, we come to the fight at the entrance hall. There's a new sucking UI being a circle that once filled up gets you your next boost, which allows you to slam ghosts into the floor. And once again, Luigi has no goo yet. Next up, we see another new hotel room, similarly looking Halloween-y like Luigi's room, but it has blue suitcases. Perhaps this is the room to Blue Toad, or just something entirely different. We can also see the wardrobe door in the background swinging. It's also glowing a little bit red. I think this is an indication for the player to use the plunder ability, or the suction shot, to open it up and reveal something new. That slamming comes on a cooldown timer. You can do it as much as you want until it entirely runs out. Once again, Luigi has no goo. Here's a hallway fight, Luigi has no goo. And here we are at an elevator. This could be a central elevator. It makes sense since the hotel is one big tower, and this is an elevator you keep coming back to. Though instead of being on floor one like we were with everyone else and the weird humanoid ghost lady, we're now on floor five. This actually, the idea of the elevator being the main thing we keep coming back to, makes room for a blackout sequence to come back. Now Luigi will have to take the stairs in some imaginary scenario. Either way, what is confirmed so far is Luigi has no goo. So next up we see EGAD's lab, and there's a few things to take note of. First of all, the B1 on the screen. Does this imply that you can teleport once again with EGAD's teleportificationizer or whatever it's called? In this case, you'll be taken to basement one. Is it still mission-based elements into this game? Or is it just fast traveling around the hotel tower? Or is B1 where the lab actually is? And that the lab is at basement floor one of the tower. Also, we can clearly see that this is EGAD's first interaction with Luigi for this game. And once again, 
Luigi has no goo. So up next, we're actually going to talk about Gooigi, since we're done with all of the no goo scenes. We're back in the car room again, but now with goo. I assume maybe Luigi comes back and makes that discovery, or it's just the first place that you learn about it? I don't know. Either way, it doesn't seem to be the same event. It could be, but who knows. We do see straight ahead right in front of Luigi is a mouse hole, perfect perhaps for Gooigi to enter, literally slurping down and getting through. Also, can I just say, I love that they actually introduced Gooigi first in Luigi's Mansion 3DS and then made him more of a staple thing in this current one. Why did I not realise that the green goo that's been hinted this whole time is not at all attached to the green Gooigi from the, the 3DS game? Ah, oh, just... Uh... Great twist, great twist. Next up we have the bathroom. It's got some nice design and lighting, I must admit. And hey, Luigi actually has goo. This was previously put in the middle of all the non-goo scenes, but I put it way later because, you know, he's got goo now. We can see potentially an interactable fan to the left, and we also reveal a weird ghost in the cubicle. This might be a demo ghost that doesn't have its animation, so it's just not supposed to properly be witnessed yet. Maybe this is a toy trap of a ghost, or maybe it's a collectible. Maybe you can get like a gallery of models or ghost dolls of each type. Maybe you can decorate Luigi's room, like as a thing you keep going back to, or maybe Egad's lab. Or, you know, it's just a weird looking frozen ghost. I don't know. Moving on, we have the food ghost cutscenes. There's not too much to see here, but we can see that there are more animated cutscenes before a bigger fight. So moving on, now that we're moving into more of Guigi's actual abilities that I won't go into because they pretty much explain it in the trailer, we do now see a watermelon room. Watermelons literally growing everywhere, infesting this entire bathroom. Maybe it's a slight nod and reference to Super Mario Sunshine, just taunting all the people that played that damn mission? I don't know. Perhaps this could even be attached to a larger infestation floor, whether it's all watermelons or just plant life in general. Because another thing we see is a fantasy grassland outside. It's not much, but maybe this is connected to the watermelon infestation? It's still plant life. More potentially connected is the big plant that we see in this one scene with Luigi swinging across a vine. This very much looks like a more of a plant infestation kind of theme, so again, maybe could be connected to watermelons or be part of the same floor. Moving on to another segment of connected scenes is now the dress shop. Here we can see that Gooigi can walk through the bars, but we also see later on that this is attached to a much larger little shopping centre in the middle of the hotel. And there's a little bit more of a card motif. Maybe this is a cards floor or a shopping floor, I'm not really sure. But we do see that the hearts are to the right with the dress shop, the spade is to the left with the scissors or hairdressing shop, and obviously the centre part is the shopping centre. With the hairdressing shop, maybe there could be a hairdressing mini boss portrait ghost. That would be interesting to see. I guess they can attack with scissors? Or they try and change Luigi's moustache? I'm not sure about that. In the centre, up top, we do seem to see some kind of coffee shop, which makes me think of Mario and Luigi, because EGAD and coffee is kind of a running joke. Well old reference more likely. And I couldn't quite tell what the shops are in the top left and top right, but the one in the top right is maybe a gift shop? It looks like it might be a present, but I'm I'm really not sure on that one. So moving on, we get the water scene. There's a bathroom, there's a water leakage, and Gooigi can't survive. We can see in the left cubicle that there are collectible gems that can be recollected. Hopefully there'll be more uh, fun this time, we'll see. And a question now pops up. Does Gooigi disappear, or does he just return to Luigi? Like, can you restock on goo somewhere? Is goo created by ectoplasm of ghosts being sucked in, so once you collect a certain amount of ghosts, you can make your own Gooigi? An interesting thought. Next scene that I couldn't really connect to anything directly is this tower ledge scene. It's a cool animation, has some nice atmosphere, and hey, it's an expressive Luigi as well. We then get the next series of scenes all connected with a kind of medieval floor. First we get the castle entrance, and we see a big old S symbol up top. Do remember that, you'll be seeing it in the next few scenes. And somehow this is outside of the hotel. Perhaps this is on the balcony on the right that I think we see in the tower title screen or something. There's also a lion face just above off the doorway that could perhaps be a boss later on, or maybe the owner of the line is the boss. In the same style, we then get the knight's room with destructible armor that can potentially hide a ghost. Obviously, all of these knight armors could be attacked with the slam ability, so it's just more interactable items. And yes, that S symbol comes back. Next, we get the barrel room with more of those S symbols. Maybe it's not even an S, it's something else entirely, but what do I know? And we're introduced to ghosts with wooden shields. We've seen them in the past with Dark Moon, but now we see that the slam ability is specifically made to 
to counter that shield. There's also tomatoes on the ground. This could just be a minor little decorative element, or maybe this is a hazard for the poltergust being an actual blockade for you to use the plunger. Or maybe it's a weapon that you can also shoot at the ghost. I don't know if it'll make any difference, but it's a thought. We also get a medieval mini elevator, as I've called it. The fans slash turbines are what control the mini elevator, but otherwise there's not really too much else to point out about it. There's a chance that this medieval section maybe ends with the gladiator portrait ghost boss we saw later. It might be something else entirely, but I'll put it in anyway. Here is a fancy special boss equipped with his own little horse and fake crowd. It's a fancy arena boss fight that could be a lot of fun. So now we come to the spooky elevator cutscene. It's that central elevator again. Very spooky, very nighttimey, and very kind of glowy. This looks like it could be the theater floor or the film floor, judging by the designs on the door here. But more interestingly is the machine we see in the background. I think that this is potentially one of Egad's devices that lets Luigi teleport into the elevator. This would be simple enough as it's literally just a one thing that you need to teleport to, but the elevator can take you anywhere in any which floor. It's a simple one pathway for the teleporter, but it has just access to everything. You always appear in the elevator first to explore the next floor. Going by the idea that this is maybe the actual film set level, there is a film set room. There's not too much to see here, but maybe you can interact with the TV, and maybe you can interact with the power cable on the left. Maybe you have to turn on the set to do something. We also see a policeman ghost again being another semi-portrait ghost. Perhaps as a boss you have to dodge his shots. Maybe you lure him with donuts, because he's a stereotypical fat police officer. Or probably you just have to attack him and he attacks like normal. Um, maybe you have to suction shot his glasses off to make him weakness. Or maybe, if it is connected to the film set level, maybe he's just an actor. He just wants lunch, and you're there destroying his hopes and dreams, or he wants to destroy yours, I don't know. And the final main game thing I want to talk about is the King Boo scene. There's a little bit to pick up. The main one that I'm kind of not a fan of is the dark light particles return. We see them showing up and taking away a door. This might be just for King Boo, his own mini little thing, but if it is an actual reoccurring thing, then... Uh, I don't find it very fun, but oh well. We also see the same peach luggage as we saw before in the trailer. Though the King Boo fight also seems to be fairly samey to Dark Moon. Hopefully this is just a mini fight and not the final boss, because I don't want the final boss came play in my second ever trailer for the game. Though it would be cool if we were running through the entire hotel with multiple references. Maybe we teleport into different hallways. Well, as long as it's not just the same hallway four times in a row like Dark Moon. But hey, who's bitter? That is pretty much all of the main storyline clips. There was another one of the cart moving, but there wasn't really much to say about that one. But there was more shown in the trailer that I kind of want to briefly touch on, and that is the Scare Scraper. Very much a different mode. It does have a few things that may be relevant to the main story. Either way, I thought I'd talk about it anyway. For a start, we see a new type of ghost. It looks like an orange earthworm gym to me. It's very thin and wormly, and it might not even be orange. I'm colorblind. We do see, as more of a scarecraper element, a lot of Boo decorations. We see a King Boo portrait appear in multiple areas, and some kind of Boo item on the bed. It seems like the actual scarecraper belongs to a Boo, hence the neighbor sign of the Boo on it. Also, we see one of the Luigis use some kind of super flash, a giant flash of explosion that affects the entire room and has an incredibly long stun time, judging by this one ghost here. We also see that toads are a little bit collectible, perhaps being an actual mission objective now. It's also 8 player online, which is pretty cool. And also we see one of the Luigis playing has a sparking poltergust, maybe it's overstocking on power. Maybe going back to the ectoplasm idea, it sucked in so many ghosts that it just can barely contain the control of power anymore. Or maybe it's some kind of timed upgrade boost that gives you extra power for that last little moment. Maybe this is even the prequel to the Super Flash in that, I mean, that overpowering power is what explodes into the Super Flash we see earlier. We also see in this exact same clip another Luigi wearing a siren hat. Is this a collectible item? Some kind of upgrade? Maybe it could stop nearby ghosts from approaching you? Or maybe it's an indication of the number one player, the winner so far, kind of like Super Mario 3D World. Also, the map on the Scarecraper shows room clearances, maybe helping you with your objectives, or maybe that's part of your objectives, clearing all the rooms. Either way, that is all of the content from the Luigi's Mansion 3 trailer that I could find to analyze and speculate about what is potentially happening in Luigi's Mansion 3. We know the game is coming out this year and is very clearly a Halloween-y game, the decorations are literally just Halloween-y for the most part. 
so we'll have to see just what comes true and just how much more we'll see before then. For now though, that is all I'm going to cover for today. I'm currently going through all sorts of E3 coverage like Animal Crossing and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I'll be doing a review of Kingdoms of Hyrule very, very soon, since that game literally comes out in like a day or two. If you're interested in seeing my live reaction to E3, then do check out Dan's Let's Plays where I'll have it all linked and ready and prepared by the time that I finish recording this and editing it. But otherwise, that is all from me for now. I do hope you enjoyed. If there's anything I missed or any other speculative ideas you have, do feel free to let me know and make a little discussion. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video to this to talk about all the other things that we potentially haven't talked about today. For now though, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.